two partners are exactly alike, that can get really boring sure. or it can get competitive as well. And that can create different types of problems. So So what happens when opposites are attracted to each other? So by this, I'm thinking about the introvert who falls in love with the extrovert. Can it work? It can work and it usually does work. What I've found in personality difference between couples is the Jordan River tends to want to marry the Dead Sea. <laughs> so that's the way I like to put it. Now, in the beginning of the fireworks phase, it's great. This one does all the talking, this one does all the listening, but seven to 10 years into the marriage, misunderstanding can come in. Why don't you talk with me? Well, I've never talked with you. <laughs> I've always listened to you, but now all of a sudden it could be a problem. Mm -hmm. Relationships that are built primarily on friendships tend to last a lot longer, if mm -hmm. not stay together forever. Mm -hmm. um, so understanding the differences is primary to making that work, but they do attract one another mm -hmm. like over half the time. Wow. I would jump in with my own relationship, actually. I was married once before and learned a lot in that relationship. Left it, really wanted to find somebody I was compatible with. I just really wanted to find my best friend for the rest of my days. And um, I'm an off the charts extrovert. And my husband now, my second husband, is by definition an introvert. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting that when we have, um, when I'm feeling low energy, I'm feeling either blue or just really, I need to be revitalized, I go out. I want to hear live music. I want to go to a lively restaurant. I want to invite all my girlfriends. He, on the other hand, when he's feeling like that, he needs to go to the other room with a book. Mm -hmm. He needs some downtime. He needs ESPN and nobody coming in the room. And I, at first I had a really hard time getting that. Like, come on, let's go out, let's go out. Yeah. And now I respect it. And the mm -hmm. fact that we talk about it all the time, what do you need, really made all the difference mm -hmm. in, the, in the relationship. So now it's because we understand each other and I understand myself, we give each other the freedom to do whatever we not need and we can say it. Mm -hmm. And I think that just really strengthens us um, each day because I know who he is and mm -hmm. what he needs. Mm -hmm. You know, the issue is we don't see people as they are, we see them as we are. That's right. And that creates the difficulty. Mm -hmm. So we have to see them as they are and as you said, respect the difference mm -hmm. and realize they're not doing that because they're trying to annoy me. That's just how they're wired. That's right. And so when we understand that, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And, and not to judge it. That. And that's to be right. able to allow them to be and give space for each other. Because if two partners are exactly alike, that can get really boring. Sure. Or it can get competitive as well. And that can create different types of problems. So, you know, to have that non-judgment, it's really playful and it brings a lot of compliment. I think I'd like to define what we call a um, extrovert and an introvert. You know, I, I've, I've, I've studied this uh, a good deal and I'm going to come up with a new idea in a book at some point here. But anyway, I, I like Isabel Meyer's uh, definition, which is what the one you're operating on. It's where you get your energy. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very much of an introvert, like your husband. Mm -hmm. But I think I think there's a second part to that. It's where you get your energy is the degree to which you're an extrovert and an introvert. But I, I think that there's some people who are outgoing as opposed to reserved. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm an outgoing introvert. Mm -hmm. I can go out, I can be part of the whole party, but I come home exhausted. Mm -hmm. and whereas you come home filled. Yeah. And uh, I have other people in my life who are really extroverts, but they're the reserved part. They're dying to be around people. They're dying to have that connection. They need that energy. But they're very poor at, at actually building relationships because mm -hmm. they're so reserved. So uh, I, I'm, I'd like to broaden that concept into the outgoing introvert and the outgoing extrovert. Are you an outgoing extrovert? I am. You're both. But my husband mm -hmm. would be an outgoing introvert. Uh -huh. He's very like social. Me. He's able to do it. Yeah. It's just that it exhausts him. Exactly. Yeah. And then he needs to recoup. Right. Where I just keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's I'm a reserved nice extrovert. You're oh, yeah. a reserved extrovert? Yeah. I mean, I sit in a room and say nothing the whole night. But then when I get up, I get all my energy from exchanges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. on my clock. Right. You know. So in the, on the Myers-Briggs, you know, yeah. where a lot of people get their scale, I'm right in the middle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, I'm almost right. a zero, which yeah. I found to be very interesting. There are definitely moments in my life where I need people, and there are moments when I, I can't. I yeah. have to hide. So it sounds like it's somewhat natural to be attracted to your opposite, you know, and that that can be a really good thing, provided that you understand who you are and the role you're playing in your relationship. And this panel has offered a lot of insight to people. So if you are an introvert in love with an extrovert, there's a lot of hope for that relationship.